Hey, what's up, everyone? I hope you all are having a great day. Um, just got news that school is going to be closed for the remainder of the school year. So Mr. Smith is going to miss seeing you all. Um, but hopefully we can continue this interaction through these YouTube videos. I hope that the last YouTube video reviewing over evolution um, helped you all out a lot. I received a couple emails with people where, you know, saying thank you and it helped them out a lot. So we are going to try to keep that going today. And today's topic that we have is all about taxonomy, which is the classification of living and non-living species. So remember, in the beginning of this semester, we started talking about genetics. And then we got onto the conversation regarding are all mutations, genetic mutations, bad? And we all know by now, the answer to that question is no. Some mutations are favorable. Some favorable mutations can lead to adaptations and that can lead to things like evolution. But once we get into evolution, we discuss topics such as speciation, the divergence or the creation of new species. Today, what we're gonna do is simply classify these new species. And that's essentially what taxonomy is. Taxonomy is the classification of species based upon their similarities. And the language that we are going to use to name these species is going to be in Latin. All right, so one of our early authors of classification, one of our, of our earlier taxonomists was a person by the name of Aristotle. He had organized species into plants and animals. Now, what's the issue here? Why is this system flawed? What are some things that we are missing? Normally in class, when I present this PowerPoint, I'll have a few students that'll pop up and say, well, what about bacteria? Bacteria is not classified as an animal nor a plant. So in other words, he was the Lamarck in evolution where he didn't quite understand evolution correctly, but he still theorized how it worked. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to talk about the father of taxonomy very briefly. So the father of taxonomy is a guy by the name of Carlos Linnaeus. Now remember, what does this word right here, father mean? The father means that this is the person who we have accepted their theories of how this how this thing works such as Greg Mendel the father of genetics Charles Darwin the father of evolution Carlos Linnaeus is the father of taxonomy and to this day we are using his hierarchical classification system which goes kingdom phylum class order family genus and species you should have visited this information back in your seventh or eighth grade year and let me go ahead and refresh your memories. You should have came up with some type of mnemonic device, which means that we're simply going to take the first letter of each system and create a saying. So for example, king for kingdom, Philip, follow him, came over for good soup. Some people change this out and they put things like great or they put grape soda, but how can you remember the correct order of these hierarchical systems because you are responsible and we are going to have a quiz where i'm going to literally ask you can you list these systems from greatest to least or i might ask you from least to greatest and this is how you can remember it king philip came over for great or good suit it's kind of the same thing that we kind of came up with when we were looking at mitosis and I told you all how to remember the stages of mitosis, PMAT, prophase, metaphase, interphase, telophase. But in a mnemonic device, we actually have words to replace these uh, letters over here. So it'd be King Philip came over for good soup. That's how you can remember the correct hierarchical system. Now, part of that hierarchical system, there are two very important parts here. And that is going to be the genus and the species. Remember, the main goal here is how are we classifying these species based upon their similarities? And as we go down the hierarchical system, species are becoming more specific. So that means that we are becoming least inclusive and more specific species that we are looking at. Here in the kingdom, if we go back a couple slides, 
We see it here when we look at this kingdom. We have a whole bunch of animals, right? We have bears, we have cats, we have canines, we have dolphins, we have frogs, we have invertebrates, we have vertebrates. But what happens as we get down to the species level? The classification becomes more specific. Now, remember, this is the language that we are writing these species names in. And this is in Latin. But what part of the hierarchical system are we using to name these species? That is going to be the genus and species. That is the two part naming system that we are using. Y'all just scratched all through that. I meant to underline that. I'm so sorry, y'all. But the two part naming system. So remember, what does the prefix to mean? By. So binomial nomenclature means that this is a two part naming system, genus and species. Genus always comes first and it's going to be capitalized. I'm going to let you know right now, there's going to be a quiz question. For example, if I look at this wolf, this is the binomial nomenclature for a wolf. Canis sounds like canine, right? Canis lupus. Second part is going to be the species. So the species of wolves are lupus. The genus is going to be canis. There's going to be a quiz question where I'm going to ask you which of the following is the correct binomial nomenclature name for this given species. All of the answers are going to be the same. But what's going to be different? This C right here might be lowercase. This L over here might be uppercase. It is up to you to know that it is capitalized for the genus, lowercase for the species. Humans. So our genus is Homo. Our species level is Sapien. A little bit after spring break, we're going to start figuring out what in the world happened to other human-like species. So for example, the genus Homo branched out many places this is where we would be right here but what happened to other species like homo erectus what happened to the other species under the homo genus they all went extinct so there were more than one human species that roamed the earth but they all have went extinct and what makes us so important why are we still here today we'll talk about that on another day y'all so we're gonna close things out right here. There's two methods of classifying living organisms. We already did cladograms. How we feel about cladograms? Do we feel okay? We should feel okay about cladograms. But what we're gonna look at today, and a lot of you all, for some reason, this is the first year ever where I've had students asking me about dichotomous keys since like August. And I feel really, really bad that we're not in class to do these things um, in person. But a dichotomous key is a method that we can use to identify an unknown organism. So for example, let's say that school was still in session and we went on a field trip and I was interested in finding bird X. What is bird X's name? So die, remember means two. So that means that each trait, there's going to be two steps. It's either you have it or you don't. Most of the times, if you don't, it's going to refer you to go to another step. So let's take a look at this. If I want to focus only on bird X, I don't care about bird W, bird Y, bird Z. We always have to start, I'm gonna repeat that, we always have to start at step one. Now, the first line, always start at A. The beak is relatively long and slender. Nah, okay. The beak is relatively stout and heavy. Okay, where are we going? Going to step two. Now that we're at step two, it says the bottom surface of the lower beak is flat and straight. So in other words, it will look more like bird W. Nah, the bottom surface of the lower beak is curved. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we curve it right here. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now we're going to three. So now we're at our last step but we got a couple names of these birds that I cannot 
say correctly, so I'm not even going to attempt today, y'all. But it's either going to be the platyspiza or the kramamala around the naka naka nakas. All right, y'all got what I'm saying, right? All right, here we go. So, bird X, the lower edge of the upper beak has a distinct bend. Yes or no? Nope. Could that be this person or this bird right here? We see how this beak right here has a distinct bend. Let's take a look at B. The lower edge of the upper beak is mostly flat. See how this lower edge of the beak is mostly flat? So that would be the answer. But let's do a little bit more practice. What I want you all to do right now is I want you to take a look at this cladogram. Make sure that you have your screen on max. And for practice, because you're going to have a homework assignment after this, that you're going to be required to turn in. I want you to practice finding all of these aliens by their names. Remember, always start at one and always start at a every single step that you have to go. So, for example, if I want to find this green guy right here, I start at one. A is his mouth open? Yes. Alien mouth is open, so I am going to two. Once I get to two, does this alien have arms or no arms? I think we all can agree that the alien doesn't have arms. So that means that this alien's name is Alienus Quad Legicus. What does quad mean? Four. This alien has four legs, right? So that would be the answer for number one. I want you all to take a minute. I want you to answer the next five. Uh, just pause the video and whenever you are ready to resume, we'll go over it together. All right, here we go. Now, if you haven't paused the video yet, don't forget, pause the video. If you have already paused the video, worked it out, we about to go over the answers. But if you haven't paused the video, pause the video, pause the video. All right, here we go. So I'm looking for this yellow guy right here. Um, is his mouth open? Oh, it's her mouth though. I don't know. It's the alien, y'all. Mouth is not open. So we are going to four. Skip it two and three. I don't care anything about two and three right now. We're going to number four. Does this alien have arms? No. I mean horns, excuse me. No horns. We're going to five. Alien has no legs. The answer for that one is alien is blob a kiss, right? It's a blob, right? Blob. Let's look at purple guy. Uh, mouth is not open. Nah, going to four again, has horns, no horns, going to five, has legs, correct, alien is fuzzy kiss, is the purple guy right here, right, he's fuzzy, right, all right, here we go, mouth is closed, so we're going to four, has horns, yep, alien is stripper kiss, has stripes in his horns, right, alien stripper kiss, we got him, now, when we're looking for this individual here, mouth is open, we're going to two, has arms we're going to three now in the territory we haven't been here yet right i don't have anything marked up not hairy alien is try toothy kiss why my man here has three teeth god bless him now that we know the last one is going to well we you know it's going to be hairy kiss because that's the last available answer but let's just go over for those who are kind of confused on how we got here so mouth is open going to four no horns. We're going to five. Oops, oops, oops. Let me back up. I'm sorry. Arms goes to three. My bad, y'all. Goes to three. And Harry, alien is Herakus. And that is it, y'all. That is it for this PowerPoint. Now, what I want you all to do, I'm going to show you this assignment. The assignment that I have here for you all is making your own dichotomous key. All right. Now, in making your own dichotomous key, if you want to print out this assignment, you can. But what I'm going to do, and this is this is a image. So when I send it to you all, you're not going to be able to write on this. Um, but if you want to just take a picture, uh, you can handwrite your answers. Just take a picture, email it to me. I'll give you full credit for this assignment. Um, again, we're just reviewing what we did for week one. What I would like for you all to do is to create a dichotomous key for the given worksheet. OK, there are several ways that you can do your dichotomous key. 
but be very careful. You do not want to contradict your dichotomous key. Now, for example, let me tell you how I've seen students contradict the dichotomous key. How I would recommend um, starting, you always want to make clear, definite answers or observations. So for example, make sure that when you are doing your dichotomous key is either you have the trait or you do not have the trait. So for example, if I will start with the turtle, because turtles are my ultimate favorite, I would say animal has a shell for step A or B, animal does not have a shell, right? So I can't put A for animal has a shell and then B, I say animal has a beak, right? It has to be that you have the trait or you don't. So if I said A, animal has a shell, go to step two. B, animal does not have a shell, go to step three. Because now that leaves me with these four right here, right? So once I get the two, I can say animal can swim or animal has flippers, da da da, sea turtle. Animal has clubbed feet or animal has long neck, Galapagos turtle. See, now these two are finished. You wanna then possibly go, if I was doing this, once I get to step three, I would say animal can fly, animal cannot fly. Cause now that separates my birds from the iguana and the hammerhead shark. And that is it. Um, but other than that, I hope you all are doing well. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section. I will be checking them and I will respond back to you. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Peace.